Bitcoin has just broken down from the $40,000 level. And this comes just days after the influencers, the hedge fund managers, the media told us that Bitcoin was going to send us God candles. Prices up to $50,000, $100,000 Bitcoin because the ETF was announced. However, we've been doing our detective work here, looking out for signs of distribution, the insiders selling to the market, the smart money selling into the market. And so far, things have been working out relatively well. Now I wanna share with you what I think is going to happen over the coming weeks. Now this could be one of the best opportunities we get if we missed out on the previous 14 months since the cycle low. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. This is your home of macro cycle analysis covering Bitcoin, crypto, stocks, and of course, the real estate cycle. We need to give us a holistic picture of the market so we can understand what is happening next. This is a special time of year for us at the Investor Accelerator as it's our birthday. It's our third birthday. So if you want to get on board with the Investor Accelerator sale, link in the top of the video description. Plus, it gets you access to our free crypto and economic report. It only takes 10 seconds to join the email list and you'll get plenty of free content to help you with your trading and investing throughout this boom and bust stage of the cycle. Let's kick it off with the macro cycle at hand. We had a new all time high on the S&P 500. Now we covered this in yesterday's video, so I'll leave a link to that at the end of this video for you to refresh your memory. But overall, this is a good thing for the cycle. The good thing for the macro cycle, real estate, stock markets, and Bitcoin. But of course, we're gonna to get to how the market has continued to lie to us at peaks. They lie at the bottom, they lie at the tops, they lie at intermediate turns, and we can see this on a chart. So we need to keep in mind the different timeframes that we're working with here. The macro still on track. For the micro, it could be a fantastic opportunity when we get these corrections in the market. How far down, how much time do we have? They're the big questions that we wanna to get to here. So let's look at the macro cycle here for new all-time high prices for the S&P 500. So this chart below shows how many trading days the S&P 500 has gone without making a new all-time high. And then essentially the trigger is for when it makes a new all-time high after 252 trading days. So essentially the amount of trading days in a year, 365 days in a year, but there's only about 250 odd trading days per year, weekends, public holidays. So when this signal hits, it's done so 14 times in history since the 1950s, you can see it's had a phenomenal hit rate. This hit rate after 12 months has been absolutely ginormous. You can see 40%, 14%, 11%, 13%. And the one option was 2007. Yes, we had the GFC up to that point. It was 8% down 12 months later from this signal. And yes, some are going to point to that saying that's exactly where we currently sit. The all time high, we must collapse. But remember what we do here, focus on the data, focus on the probabilities. The probabilities are saying that we are not going to collapse in 2024, nor 2025. The probabilities are saying we still have some more time in this cycle to the upside, which is good news for BTC, even though we're seeing it correct at this current point. So of the 14 instances, 12 months later, 13 of them were winners, one of them was a loser, giving us a 93% hit rate that the year of 2024 is going to be positive. It's going to end positive. Now we can see the uh, bottom end here, the lowest percentage gains of those years, 5%, 5%, 7.5%, and then of course the negative 8%. So in terms of a new all-time high, if we also look at the average and the median, 13 to 14%, where would that leave the S&P 500 come the end of the year? So let's first look at the average and the median, there's 13%, uh, it's roughly 5,400 points, and then 14% is about 55 hundred points. If it was the lowest end, say that four to 5%, four is about 5,000, 5% is about 5,050. So the worst case scenario, if we get to have a positive year, would still be in the 5,000 point region, not far from where we are, but still a positive year, which would mean we'd have quite a rocky year uh, as we still have about 11 months to go. The market's just not going to hit 5,000 and then sit there for the entire 11 months. I think we'd probably see some volatility. To the downside, if it was 8%, 8.5% like the worst year that it's seen, that would bring it down to 4,400 points. So it's still above very key support levels. We could see some corrections there, but that means that that is where the year 
would close out. That's where the S&P 500 would, would close out at the end of the year. Now, you probably know that that's not the view here on the channel. I don't think that's going to happen. And I do think the market is going to find some positive ground to close out the year, which of course is great news for Bitcoin and cryptos because we see 10% on the stock market. Potentially, we see 20, 30, 40, 50% for Bitcoin. And then you can even double those for cryptos, depending on which crypto, of course. 50%, 100%, we'll wait and see. The main point here is we want to see the risk coming into the market, more traders and investors coming in to think that they're going to get massive gains. And that brings on more of that risk appetite. Once they realize they can get better odds and bigger gains in Bitcoin and crypto, well, then naturally they shift over to those markets to try and play those to make more and more gains. That is more data for the macro cycle, looking like we're going to see positive results for the end of 2024. No financial collapses, no major recessions to collapse the market. And then in 2025, we're still expecting a big year as well. I think this is what is going to take a lot of people by surprise. Now, what has taken the masses in Bitcoin and crypto by surprise is the sell the news event of the ETF announcement. Obviously, if you guys have been here, and I suggest you do by hitting that subscribe button, is that we called out this BS early in the piece. This was the first warning back here. They're full of BS. This is where they lie to you about, we're going to see God candles, all this money coming into the market, and it is going to pump the market. So get on board now before you miss out. That's the calls that we saw a few weeks ago before the ETF. And of course, that's natural. That's what happens in the media. So provided we don't get caught up with that, we're going to do relatively well, or at least better than the masses because the masses tend to watch that garbage and they get sucked into it. You had a massive sucked in candle right there. Uh, on the bars, it looks the same. That's basically a massive reversal candle. Now this is on the four hour. So we're looking at two different time frames here. Macro, we were looking at uh, weeklies and monthlies. Now on the shorter term, I'm looking at the four hour chart here for Bitcoin to anticipate what happens next and potentially how much time we have, which is where we'll go back to the monthly charts in just a moment. Now, as an update with our Wyckoff distribution, we have officially entered phase E. Now, if this is all new to you, don't worry. Let's have a look right here. We've been following the phases all along the way uh, from all the way back at the first warning. This was the second warning here that the market was about to reverse, and then the following day, collapse. Just like it did on the first, we saw that collapse there. And this was the warning sign that the market was getting ready to go down. Obviously, we don't know for sure 100% at the end of the day. This is the black side that no one knows. It's the unknown. And we're basically just detectives trying to figure out what happens next. I think we've done pretty well here. If you guys are following along and seeing this, congratulations to you. This is just going to play out time and time again. Now, this little move to the upside was the up thrust. It turned into a sign of weakness and then into another up thrust after distribution. Interesting that because... You can see the market went higher than the previous two up thrusts and the buying climax. And then you could see that it was unable to close above the buying climax. So that was a really key, uh, important point for the entire structure. It couldn't close above there. So at the peak of the buying climax, the market was unable to close above that on a more macro time frame on the weekly here. That's why you can see these bars are uh, less. So it wasn't able to close above that. That was telling us warning signs that it was probably looking weak. So as we head back to the four hour chart, the rest is history from there. Sign of weakness unfolded, your SOW turned into a last point of supply where the market tried to rally from that point. Remember, all those fools, those idiots telling us to buy the dip. When you get very long extended moves that happen for multiple weeks, maybe even multiple months, but after such long extended moves from that point, often the market is getting ready to collapse. The flip side to that is if you see it break back above those levels and close above, that's the invalidation. Go with the trend, continue to buy up. But what you typically see is all of the idiot influencers telling you to buy the dip after two days down. And what happens is you are the exit liquidity. Last point of supply, bam, sign of weakness. Last point of supply, bam, weakness. So we are now officially in phase E. So how far down does this go? Simply put, we're just going to look at the previous support and resistance levels and also the 50% levels for signs of where the market could come out in base and potentially consolidate over the coming weeks, maybe even a couple of months. The definition for phase E is that it depicts the unfolding of the downtrend. The stock leaves the trading range and supply is in control. 
This was our trading range. It's beginning to leave that now. We know that it was going to have these moves to the upside as phase D had told us. We got confirmation of phase D as there were often multiple weak rallies within phase D. These last points of supply represent excellent opportunities to initiate or add to profitable short positions. As we discussed in all the previous videos, while the market was peaking and dropping, showing last points of supply before the market continued to break down. Now, as for the breakdowns in terms of price, where can we find some support, the percentage corrections, and then also looking at some time to give us an idea of how long this might last. Let's focus on the larger term timeframes. Now for the Aussies, I've got the SwiftX chart to get through the Bitcoin AUD chart, just to give you a couple of updates on the numbers. But for now, let's focus on the weekly chart here. So for the corrections, what Bitcoin has done over this course of the first stages of the bull market is correct 22.5%, 20%, and 22%. We're currently at 19.8%. So basically right within that area of what it has already done previously. So if this is the end of the correction, well, it would have done exactly what it has already done in this bull market. But if we head towards the 50% level, because we have gone on a pretty significant run, we've had a major news event happen, and the market needs some time to rest, correct, consolidate before we head up again. Well, I think we could potentially look to around 24.5% back to the 50% level, which is $37,000. So there's our first target for a price support. Now don't get too hung up on that and don't hope and wait for that one price. Remember there are still prices like 38 and pretty much we're just looking at roughly mid to high 30s for that pullback. 30, uh, 38,000 had previous tops uh, that the market was consolidating at before it broke out. So 37 to 38, if that is in your ballpark for a pullback, that gives you 22.5% down to 24.5%. So pretty reasonable considering what we have seen over the course of this bull market already. Now, when is this going to occur? Well, we come back to our trusty 50% levels, the macro bear market range 50% levels. In each of the previous cycles here, going back to 2015 and the 2019 move out of the lows, we hit the 50% level once, had a pullback, and then on the second attempt, we break through it. Just looking at the monthly chart here, that took roughly 22 months to break out and for the first attempt going back to the 2015-16 move out of the low it took about 17 months to break out so that gives us a rough time frame of where we currently sit for uh, BTC or how many more months we have to go which we'll add to the chart in just a moment but essentially you can see what we ran up to 50% corrected and then attempted it again so the last cycle did the same thing except it happened a lot quicker in the first instance it rejected and then on that second attempt, it got that tiny pullback before the market went on from that point. We had an earlier test as well at roughly 19 months from the cycle low. So in the first instance, it was about six months from that cycle low that it tested, and then we had the pullback. Then you had 19 months tested again, 20 months only just closed on it slightly above, one extra month pullback, and then the market was on its way into the mania stage. So basically that was the entire stage of the major accumulation before the market broke out into the, uh, into the mania. So now we sit at 14 months from the cycle low, which gives us another eight months until that confirmed breakout. That, that brings us to September 2024, so a couple of months before the election. Now the US elections are going to be very, very important this year, I think for the markets. You can see from the previous cycles, uh, it's gone absolutely ballistic when we've hit that election month. November 2020, huge move to the upside, touched that new all time high. 2016, you can see that it was breaking out on that month, took out those highs and was closing above the 50% level. This time round, it might happen a little earlier, which is why I have put in the time frame of when the market came up to test the 50% level the previous time. So there's 19 months. So if we take this back to 19 months, 14 plus five equals 19. Well, that brings us to about June. And if we know anything about the halving, which is in April, that might only give us another month or two before Bitcoin wants to break out of that 50% and either consolidate above that level or start to head towards the all time high price, which we've anticipated to be roughly around the late quarter three or quarter four of 2024 for Bitcoin to, to get into that all time high. So for an easier look at these markets, this first half of the year is probably, I think from the analysis, going to be that time to accumulate. BTC, if you wanna keep it safe, ETH, if you wanna keep it safe, 
altcoins if you want to go degenerate that is the time first half 2024 the, conf the confirmation is in there for sure and then that second half of the year is when things start to ramp up and you'll likely no confirmation we're just detectives here likely see those prices for BTC hit into new all-time high territory here is a look at Bitcoin against the Aussie dollar. Now this is on the SwiftX chart. So if you want to join that, this is a channel sponsor. Link is in the video description. Sign up, you get your 20 bucks of free BTC. But looking at the price here, it's $60,900 to the downside. The support levels are roughly $58,600 and about $56,000 as well when we just measure the range from September into that high. So it's still looking reasonable here for good support for a correction and then following on into that next stage of the move up. For the move down in terms of a percentage, we're roughly sitting about 17% and to those levels would put you out at the same uh, corrections that the market's done all the way up. About 23% would take you down to that $56,000 level. So for the timeframes from the all time high, we currently sit at 26 months since the previous old all time high. This is really interesting that you can see from the last cycle, 26 months, was a correction that was the month before the pandemic we had the february peak march collapsed and then we had the consolidation market went on to hit new all-time highs the cycle before that 26 months from the peak was again within the correction period after the accumulation had another test little accumulation and then the market ran up from that point point. and so in the last two cycles at least it's been around this time that the market has corrected. So interesting to see that we are getting a correction right now. Do we get a breakdown in the swing chart? That will have to uh, see what happens in February and March. But for now, we're, we're still on the red. We've got nine days to go here for the month of January. So if that closes out red, then potentially we get February as a, uh, a pullback. That would still put us into something like what we saw previously in the last two cycles, which also means that this is the last opportunity, just looking at previous history, for that accumulation. Now it's the last chance for accumulation at those lower prices. But don't forget, as the cycle continues to heat up, more new projects come out, there's gonna be plenty of opportunities coming through 2024, 2025, but then you have to start getting a little more degenerate. So make sure you've got your plans in place. If you wanna learn how to trade and invest like the pros do, go and check out the link in the top of the video description for our third birthday sale. Click that, you'll also get plenty of free perks with our free crypto and economic report. Thanks again, guys. I'll see you at the next video. Hopefully that's helped you out a lot and avoid all the lies that the media and the influencers and the hedge fund managers tell you. I'll see you at the next video. Till then, take care and peace out.